Hello everyone, how are you? Today we've got a really requested video, a guide on how to design your farm on Stardew Valley. In case you're new to the channel, I am on Sugarcake and here I like to play and talk about wholesome games. Before we start, as a disclaimer, please keep in mind that everything that I will say are just my personal opinions, there are no rules when designing your farm in a game that is supposed to be fun. This is just a guide to help you if you're indecisive or don't know what to do with your farm or just want some ideas. So let's get started. For this video, I tried to put together kind of like a little process to help you decide on what you want. We will go over a few steps. We will choose a theme, define a farm type, see how to plan your farm and talk a little bit about some quick tips for decorating it afterwards. The first step is defining a theme. What I mean by that is before you're choosing what goes in your farm and what your buildings and what animals and what crops and where, it's easier to set a theme that you want to go with. You could choose one or mix and match different themes and that's entirely up to you. One theme that is pretty popular is going with a foresty style. This means you want lots of greens and earthy colors and browns, lots of trees, plants and woods, wood cabins, lakes, forest animals. We also have a beach theme, which is filled with like blue and cream and neutral colors and a lot of stone and obviously a lot of water and fishing and crabs. We have Cottage core, which is a very popular one as well. It's neutral and very warm, filled with flowers and mushrooms. It's really like aligned with like coziness and autumn season and very dreamy and earthy tones. We have lots of like pinks and creams and beiges and browns. Lots of people like witchy style as well. So lots of purples and blacks and reds, kind of like a witchy vampire supernatural kind of vibe and lots of stars and constellations and potions and poison we also have a more medieval style it's one of my personal favorites a lot of stone and woods and wells and stables and castles and mountains and taverns and kegs lots lots of browns a little bit of green here and there a little bit of gray lots of stone and of course I'm, pu I'm pulling all those references right next to it just to give a little bit like of a, a visual to what I'm talking about. We have a contemporary style which is more like greys and stone and concrete and more like you know present time kind of stuff like electricity and computers and cars. We have western style which is more like wood and straw and like farms and dry lands, more like indigenous kind of references, earthy tones as well. Lots of corn and wet if you want to pick your crops as well. Lots of yellows and browns. And of course, an Eastern theme, which is probably gonna be the hardest one to achieve in Stardew if you don't want to use mods. It's really difficult because we don't really have much like Eastern Asian kind of furniture. But I put a little bit of a reference there of a Chinese and a Korean and a Japanese kind of styles and architecture and just like colors. Um, I would say lots of pinks and reds, um, light browns, you know neutral colors, cherry blossoms, lanterns, bamboos and woods. So these are like the main themes I think that I see around and of course like I said you can mix and match different ones and well by looking at those you probably have an idea of what kind of theme appeals to you the most. Having some sort of theme helps you think about what are your favorite activities, the main areas you want in the farm and what kind of farm type you will choose in case you're starting a new save. For example, think about the activities you like the most in Stardew. Is it foraging? Is it fishing? Farming? Mining? Combat? Or friendships? Um, when I say friendships, it's because sometimes like there are some people who, instead of just like farm and fish all the time, they like to gather stuff to make gifts and free up more time to enjoy other activities like getting character events and talking to the characters in general. So that's kind of like what I mean with friendships, I just didn't know a better name. But yeah, like what are your favorite acti activities? Thinking about your theme and your favorite activities, what would be the main areas you would have in your farm? Like for example, we have honey area, um, areas to collect woods or sap 
trees, um, fruit trees, and of course your farming areas, like to plant crops and stuff like that, and the greenhouse, which is, you know, a, a standard building that you always have. Um, stuff for like space for production, um, artisan like crafting stations, coop, barn, fishing ponds, uh, slime hutch, the teleporters, which are the obelisks. And based on all of that, uh, if you think about, you know, favorite activities, main areas, based on all of this, what would be those extra areas you would like to add just to fit in with the theme? When I say extra areas, that could be like areas outside or areas in a shed, such as a cafe or a tea room or a wedding area or a campfire, for example. But you may be wondering, like, why am I asking all this stuff? Well, I hope you can kind of see where I'm going with this, but thinking about your theme and your favorite activities and your main areas and your extra areas you can finally have a rough idea of how much space you will need and where you could potentially place the buildings and how you could finally decorate it. So of course, feel free to just go back and pause the video and check the you know activities and areas, ideas that I've just shown if you need some guidance on like choosing what you like. But now the problem is that you may be feeling even more indecisive because now you have even more options and even more stuff to think about. So before we start planning your farm, I put up together kind of like an example of, you know, what we can do with this. So you can try to have an idea of how we are going to put all of this together. So let's say you really love a more foresty nature theme. I'm totally picking this up on my own example. Um, you like to forage, you like to, you know, plant trees and you like more like farming. Um, let's say you probably like farms that look like this or have some extra areas that probably look like these. But the important bit here is how would we translate all this information that we just got into a farm design? We could start by picking a farm type that fits the theme that looks like the forest farm. So it has a lot of trees and stumps and ponds, which ties in nicely with a foresty theme. You would probably use the new feature to paint your buildings in dark green and wood brown and maybe prioritize animals like ducks and rabbits and maybe even install some mods for I don't know, foresty animals like deers and squirrels and bears and other, you know, mods that are foresty themed. Buildings that would look nice with this would be the wood cabins, the well, the Genimo huts and any wooden items really, including like the furniture, like the bear statue, literally any plants, the stamp chair, the butterfly hutch, which adds a really cute, like flying butterflies everywhere and other similar items. Um, and of course, if you want to go like super strict, like you really want like an aesthetic farm, um, you could even choose like specific crops and trees that you want to plant on your farm and how to place them. Like for a foresty theme, you may want to go with the ones that have more foliage and also playing with different tree sizes and their stumps and maybe scattering them around your farm. So before we go on, please tell me in the comments if you would like me to do a video more focused on decorating the farm, where I could potentially put more examples like these that I just showed you for each theme you guys are interested on. Also, just a reminder, guys, there are no rules in this. You can always mix and match everything you like and do it your own way. The important is to have fun. This is just some guidance for people who are very indecisive and don't really know what they want to do. So now I'm hoping you kind of have an idea of what you want in your farm so we can finally start planning it. So once again, you can keep in mind the theme you like, your favorite activities, your main areas, your farm map, and let's finally go plan your farm. To get started, I think the main thing would be thinking about how much space you need for all the areas and buildings you want in your farm. For example, if you want to produce a special honey rather than wild honey, you will have to think about the spaces around the bee houses themselves, since you need to plant flowers around it, like blue jazz and stuff like that. As trees, they will need space around them in order to grow fully, as you probably already know. And don't forget you can build sheds to save space and upgrade them to increase their inside sizes. When planning the area for your actual farm, don't forget also that you may want to build Junimo huts further in the game 
and add sprinklers every few tiles. Just as trellis crops will need space around to walk since you can't step on them, and giant crops need a free for free space in order to spawn. Coops and barns will need fences, silos and areas for planting grass so you can feed the animals. I for example like to keep all the pigs in a separate barn space just so they can spawn the truffles and I can walk freely through the other spaces. Um, and lastly, try to include spaces for the obelisks and clock in case you build them and other extra areas you are planning to add to your farm. Thinking about everything that you want and how much space they will take, try to visualize how they are going to look together. For this you can use your good old piece of paper or you can use an online planner such as the Stardew Valley Map Planner, which I'm gonna link in the description below guys. Um, everything will be linked by the way, including the references and stuff. So there in this planner you can position the buildings, roads and fences and have an idea of like what's the flow you want for your farm and where you want each area to be. I recommend starting with the paths if you feel like a bit overwhelmed. just but the paths first, they will help you section the different spaces into kind of blocks that you can work on little by little as you progress in the game and also helps you have an idea of what's going to be the flow when walking around your farm. After that you can prioritize placing your main buildings, sheds and extra areas right after to then start decorating. Once you set up the structure you probably know exactly what you need. So you can just head to the game and start cleaning up your farm and finally get started with it. I will start placing the paths and buildings first as we did in the planner so we can easily section the spaces and finally start decorating it. Now that we already planned your farm and we've got everything set up, it's time to the fun part where you can go super creative and use the furniture and the placeable items available in Stardew Valley to decorate your farm. Since this video isn't focused on decorating, I'll just go over a quick, you know, a few quick tips to decorating, just to keep in mind when you start if you need like some direction. Um, first, make the most of the games. Floorings, fences, grass, crops, flowers, furniture, signs and trees. Even if you don't use any mods, you can still find good options that matches your theme. So if you'd like to see how to install mods or what are my favorite like recommended mods, don't forget to check my other videos, I'll link them in the description as well, I have quite a few on that. So the first tip I would like to say is about floorings. You can mix and match different floorings together, like in this example on the left, and use them inside other spaces, just like I've done on my cup, where I use the straw flooring to decorate it inside. Fences can also be used inside not only your coops and barns, but also your halls and sheds. You can also mix them to get different effects if you want, and even use them in a shed with like slime incubators or outside with slime incubators instead of building a slime hutch like this person did here. Grass can also be used inside spaces and can be combined with plants and garden pots to easily fill in empty spaces and suits any type of theme. Just like grass now, with the new update, you can actually place some furniture outside, not only on your farm, but actually in the whole Stardew Valley. And of course, don't forget about those really aesthetic items like signs, placed items, colored chests, and a great tip is always using trees and crops to your benefit. It's a bit more hardcore just if you want to be detailed, but trees can actually be used to hide buildings and details that you don't like much, and they can be mixed with other types of trees to achieve the look you want to get on your farm. You can chop down trees and use different sizes of them to get more interesting dynamics and even fill in the empty spaces like this person did with the whole quarry area. Last but not least, don't forget to see references. In the internet there are lots of people who are posting every day their brilliant creative ideas for the farms and you can always use it as inspiration if you really want to decorate your farm even more. Like I said before, I will link in the description down below all the links for all the images that I've shown in the video. And my last thing is, if you feel like this is a little too like overwhelming, just do it section by section. Pick a little bit of the farm each time you play and focus on doing that first, rather than trying to create your whole farm and planning everything at once. This is a game and should be fun, that's a space for you to feel comfortable, to be creative, and there is no rights or wrongs. I just hope this was helpful somehow, and I hope you have fun playing the game, and thank you for watching everyone, and see you in the next video.
bye.